You know how it is, man. I crave growth, man. I look for days like this in my life. You know what I mean? Gain understanding, meet new people, see new things, help. What we do for a living is an awesome platform to help our community and our country come together. I firmly believe that football has been great to me, man. It's opened my eyes up to things that I never would have imagined. Man, slavery worldwide is unbelievable. If we can't all come together on something like that, we tripping, aren't we? It ain't nothing divisive about rescuing young people. This isn't a football story. This is a story about a worldwide epidemic, child slavery, an issue that's important for Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin. I've never been a sideline guy yeah. in terms of the things I'm involved in. I got to be 10 toes in it. But we spend a lot of time talking about how to utilize my passions and interests in the cause in a productive way. Every time I come home from one of these ops, you know, and we're in 17 countries now and doing these, when I come home and I, it's like, it's like I get shocked when I pull up, open my news feed. How, how is this not the headline every day until it's done? As Americans, you think this is some faraway thing that occurs other places, but we're the number one consumers worldwide as we are driving this thing globally, and that's crazy to me. The men sitting alongside me and Coach Tomlin are part of a group called OUR, which stands for Operation Underground Railroad, an organization dedicated to eradicate child trafficking around the world. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. CEO and founder Tim Ballard was an ex-Homeland Security agent for the U.S. government. Tomlin and OUR are headed to the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And while Tomlin won't be going on any raids, the purpose of the trip is to get a closer look at countries whose children have been dramatically affected by human trafficking. This whole thing is just starting to affect you personally a little bit, isn't it? I decided years ago, you know, I was going to devote my time to helping people centered around kids, whether it's education or problems facing urban youth, fatherlessness, et cetera. Uh, my wife, same way. If you're committed to kids, man, you hear what they're doing, man. How can it not be? Ready, man. Ready to go now. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to go to bed. No, let's go get us. What are we talking about? Our next move was to enter Haiti through helicopter, so we'd be able to land at the village of Bukan Ferdinand, which is located in the mountains, just over 60 miles outside of Port-au-Prince. Once he arrives at the village, Tomlin will meet Gesno Marty, a Haitian father looking for his kidnapped son, Gardy. His son was born in Utah while Gesno and his family were visiting relatives in 2006. Gardy was kidnapped in Haiti when he was three years old in December of 2009. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't even get into my house and sleep. One of the suspects, I know him. I don't know for everywhere, but in Haiti, people who kidnap others, they don't do that randomly. They know their victims. As a father, my job is, you know, getting my son back. Yeah. And I will not let go. This little boy we're looking for, he's a U.S. citizen. He was born in America. This is real, and if we don't stand up, no one's going to stand up. Gesno runs an orphanage and aftercare center in Port-au-Prince. Man, I just want to give him a hug. I can't begin to understand emotionally. My heart aches for him. As we descended on the village, Tomlin will be joined by undercover agents from OUR. Their identities are hidden for their protection. He's in the greenish shirt? Yes. Oh, that's yes, sir. Yes. So Give me a hug, brother. <laughs> oh, man. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Coach Tomlin and Gesno make their way to the village where medical supplies are being delivered. 
Almost half of the kids Tomlin is seeing here do not have a single parent in their life, making them prime targets for kidnapping and trafficking. It's my first time in Haiti. I got so much respect for the awesome work that's being done here by organizations working together. Uh, I come in love. It's an honor to come help in any way that I can. Thank you. When you think about the moment of, of being able to find your son, oh, well, what goes through your mind? Tears, emotions. Even talking about it is, you know, mostly hard for me. What an honor it was again, man. Thank you. Hug you one more time. <laughs> thank you so much for making it. And... Man, thank you. Thank you for inspiring us all. All right. You do. It's been hard, but we make it. Absolutely, you will. I'm just in awe of him. The spirit that he has, the strength that he has. If my son was missing. I don't know how I could have the strength to be out here actively, not only searching for his child, but helping others. I think about the divisive times at home right now. And if we all got an opportunity to see some of this, we realize maybe how silly we are at times and how blessed we are.